hey thanks for stopping by my channel in this video we're going to cover some recon and really all the recon that we're going to cover in this video is going to be enough to get you started with identifying targets and looking for weak points and maybe areas to test for and I decided to go ahead and put out this short little tutorial on recon and how I would do it when I just pick out a program and I have maybe an hour or an hour and a half free and there's a new target this is what I would do without going into a full-blown in-depth recon for a specific target I think this will be really helpful for you especially if you're new and you are waiting on a full in-depth recon course now this recon is very different than what I would do for a penetration test for penetration testing the recon is going to be way more significant than what we're covering this is just a video on bug bounty recon and what you would need to do if you were just getting started and you see a target and you want to do some recon and then go ahead and attack it and if you're interested in my full recon course you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button I am hoping to have more time working on it in the coming weeks I've been been very busy the last month getting my kids situated and off to school so I should have more time to work on those courses in the next few weeks so let's go ahead and jump into it all right so here we are I have opened up the box tenant and before we get going too far in this video there's a couple of things you should probably know so if we just come up here and we type in hacker one and we go to the directories listing so we can see the programs and then we open up Yahoo which is a really has a really huge scope and we scroll down it's gonna tell you that you need to have something to identify yourself as whenever you are doing any kind of testing on their website and this is really common and they're gonna want something like this I think it's gonna be in a header so it says make a custom header what I do if I'm feeling really lazy and this is a new image a new Kali image then I just add the headers by coming over here we're in the proxy options and you can scroll down this is the lazy way to do it. There's a plugin that you can install that will do this for you. But I like doing this because it resets every single time. And so I can come in here, I can edit this, and then I can put my bug bounty name in here. And this will need to all be one. And it will replace the user agent. And it's going to put the user agent right here, which is just going to replace like Firefox. So it's not a big deal. So we can just hit OK. We can add this in. Now, if we come back to our proxy and we turn this on and we just intercept this request, you will see the user agent is now my bug bounty name and we don't have to worry about it being a cache key. So everything is going to work because this will change for every single user who visits a website. So here would be my name. Works great. I would just leave it like that. You can add the plugin if you want to do it the more common way and you're not super lazy. So we'll go ahead and check that out. Step number two is to find your target. So if we were to come in here, we could just come to our terminal and we could run AMAS, which you saw in my previous video. We would just type in AMAS dash enum. And then actually it's not a dash. It's just an enum dash passive. And I'm running passive so that way we don't pull down all the AS numbers and get everybody confused with IP addresses. This just makes it really simple and you just get subdomains and you can type in yahoo.com. I forgot my dash D, which would go right here. And then this will start to run for us and it won't take long and it'll start spitting out subdomains for us. But if let's say we've gone ahead and found a subdomain like this one right here, what we would do is we would just, the first thing I would do is I would want to find out what's running on it. So you can actually test this by coming up here and intercepting your request and seeing if it tells you what is actually running. So you can see my user agents changed back and you can send this to your repeater. It's not giving us any cookies, so that's not gonna be helpful. You can send this and see what we can find out. We have a version number right here. I would copy this for 100%, come out to Google, paste that in and type in exploits and see if anything is coming back. My image is going slow because AMAS is doing its job over here and slowing everything down it is causing a lot of cpu usage so you can see there are a ton of subdomains and if you watched my previous video you know what i do from here i would literally just save this whole thing in an out file and i would just copy and then i would come over here to open list which is a plugin i would paste these in 
I'd hit open URLs and it will open all of those URLs for me. Some of them resolve, some of them don't, like this doesn't resolve. And then I just close out of these because we're not actually gonna go through those. And so that's how I would run a mass. Let's say we found a target like this one right here and that's the one we want to go after. What I might do at that point is come over here because we ran passive and we didn't run active and we didn't run a dash IP, we don't have the IP address. So I would probably come to the proxy, turn this on, hit enter, grab the IP address right here, which is gonna be our tenant from Hack the Box, and it is 10, 10, 10, 23. I'm, I might come over here and ping it just like this. I would say ping 10, 10, 10, 2, 2, 3, and it's gonna tell us that it's Linux. We That will determine how I run an in-map scan, and if I'm gonna run an in-map scan, what I would do is something like an inmap dash a dash p, and then I'm not gonna do like a dash p dash, like you'll see in most walkthroughs, because we're not going to hit them with all the ports, which I think there's like 65,000 some ports, and we don't wanna hit every single port, we just want to hit the ones that are important. So you might come in here and just say like, we want port 80, we want port 443, we want 1433, 1434, we want 3306, and so on. And you'll just take a bunch of ports that you might want to look at and run an in-map scan against, and then you can slow it down. What I would do is slow this down because I'm paranoid and I don't wanna bother anybody and I don't wanna be on anybody's radar. So I would slow this down, especially because we're not running very many ports and run it like this. And then we would run the IP address, which is 10, 10, 10, 23. So I'm not actually going to go through and run that. And if you're curious about what Nmap does, you can just come in here and run a dash H and you can read through all of this information. It'll tell you everything that Nmap does for us and how to use it. So with that, ooh, I like to run a dash V. Forgot about that. I would run a dash V if I were to run that, so that way I can see what's coming back as it runs. But that is one way to go ahead and do that. Actually, we'll just go ahead and run the map, in map scan. And we're just gonna run it, and then we'll hit this with a dash V, and it's gonna go ahead and run and tell us what's going on. So we have these ports here. It won't take very long because we're only scanning just a few ports and we get this output and we're gonna get the same version number and what you can do with an nmap scan is grab this and take it out and look at, look up what this version number is. We have WordPress 5.6, you can grab this and take it out as well and see what you can find. I don't have Wappalizer installed, which will tell us what is running. Do I have the proxy on? I do. So we have Wappalizer and we want this for Firefox. So we'll go ahead, install Wappalizer, add, sure. And this is going to tell us what is running. So if we come back to tenant and let this think, we will, I'm okay with it. I just want you to run. Okay, so Wappalizer doesn't seem to want to be working for us at this current time. So we'll just close this Wappalizer. Usually I would use Wappalizer or something like that but it's not working so we're gonna just skip it. And you can check out WordPress. You can check out this WordPress 5.6 and see if there's any issues with that. And you can see if there's any known vulnerabilities on this. And then once I finish doing this type of recon and looking at this, I might want to know what is running on the server. So I'll come up here and say, tell it, let's check out an index.php and we know it's running PHP. Before that, I probably would have ran an index.html, and we get this file not found, and it's telling us we have this Apache right here. Sometimes that won't pop up on an in-map scan, and sometimes it won't pop up inside of Burp, but sometimes you can come up here and you can just pass in something that does not exist, and you'll hit like a 404 not found, and they will tell you that you have this version number and you can see if there are any known exploits for that. But in this case, that is what we see right here. And we would have already seen that in our in-map scan. So in this case, this doesn't do us any good. And one of the things I would do right away is I would probably start a fuff, something like this. 
and I have this API v1 fuzz typed in right here because a lot of times you're going to come across APIs to test and I get a lot of questions on how do you enumerate APIs or what do you do with it you can just type in the fuzz right here typically you'd see something like a login login or a users but you can just come right here and type in a fuzz and because this API v1 doesn't exist when you hit run it's going to run it really super fast but if I was to do this on a live target I would probably run some kind of FC on like a 404 because I don't really care to see not founds and this is just going to ignore everything that I don't want to see and then I would run dash H let's see where is it I would run this right here a dash P and I would run a delay of like probably a second because I don't want to show up on anyone's radar for sending 300 requests per second because you might get your IP ban and I don't want to be on anyone's radar and even if I'm running a VPN and my IP gets banned I can just switch to a different IP number and I've had to do that before in the past and it makes me really uncomfortable sending that many requests to a server so I run a dash P and usually like a half a second at least to a second depending on how fast Fuff is sending my requests and now if we come back to the tenant.htb one of the things I like to do is check a search box and sometimes you won't have search box you'll have like a random parameter up here that is going to store your information inside of the HTML so if we run this just like this over here we can send this to repeater you can actually see if we send this it's going to get stored so it's ADSF inside of the HTML in several different places and you can try to run a cross-site scripting on this if you wanted and I'll show you what happens so they actually have this filtered so if we throw in some bad characters and we run this again you can see they actually change our characters so that we couldn't turn this into a cross-site scripting but this works with other with things other than just a search bar so if you come in here and you see a search this is probably going to be filtered but sometimes you'll see um, just like some random parameter passed in here like a let's just say a location and you can type in something right here that you can check in burp and see if it's being stored in the HTML and through this parameter and you can pull a cross-site scripting that's probably the best way to do a cross-site scripting besides just throwing something into a search box because these parameters often will get stored inside of things like these links you'll see this link you'll see them inside of spans you'll see them inside like random links and like right here you have it inside the label and so it's really worth your time to just check these parameters and see if they're getting stored anywhere inside the html and then check some bad characters to see if they have any kind of filter one of the next things i would do is i would just check this basic URL since we ran the fuff with the API I would run one just right here without an API and just hit fuzz and see what comes back nothing is coming back so that's kind of a bummer you can always check the robots.txt spelled that wrong and there is nothing there either so at this point I would say my recon for this box is starting to slow down and now I would start just coming over to burp and testing I would click this and see where it takes me and I would look at it inside of burp I would see where this takes me inside of burp I would check every one of these links I've already enumerated that it's WordPress I've looked at all the versions and now it's time to start testing functionality and see what happens in here you can see if we typed in something like a two plus two and my name and a website and it doesn't really matter and we post a comment it tells us we need a valid email address and I would see what happens with this and it's not executing any code otherwise it would have given us an output and we can check to see if this is filtering so you could throw in a bunch of bad characters and just see what is happening with that same thing down here you can see if it's being stored you can look for cross-site scripting you can intercept 
the request and see if maybe you can find anything through the request right here. Maybe change some of this and see if we can find anything. It tells us right here we have this index.php and it's telling us we're doing a WordPress comment and so you can try and see maybe there is something in here you can always change the request method and see if you can get any information so we'll just send this and see what else comes across i just accidentally sent i just accidentally passed one of the requests but this is what i would do at this point and you can see it did filter out some of our characters so it does filter for bad characters so if you were to play around with this and now up here you can come and look at this and maybe we can test this and see let's put in our bad characters again so we'll just put in a bunch of bad characters and we'll intercept this i want to and we'll intercept this and see what that request was that i accidentally skipped so we'll forward you know what we should have done was go back i'm glad that it didn't send that and we'll intercept this and we'll post this and one thing I would like to do is a do intercept to see what is coming back. So we'll forward that and it tells us there's a conflict. This is the 409 is telling us that we have our bad characters. And so right here we could try a 200 okay and see if we can get our characters to go ahead and post. Oh, it says you've already submitted this. Let's see what happens and forward duplicate comment detected so it's not letting us post twice the 200 okay doesn't work i don't know how this is a duplicate comment oh because it is it is filtering these out and it is picking up just this one slap forward slash right here so this is what I, at this point, I would just start playing around with the web application and seeing what's on it. And when it comes to a bug bounty recon, that's about all the more I do is I run a mass, I grab a ton of subdomains and I start looking at them. And if I find one that looks interesting, I will walk through the process that you just saw. And that is pretty much it for a short target recon. If you just find a target and you wanna do some recon and then go ahead and start looking for exploits, this is what I would do and what I actually do when I find a target and I don't have a lot of time to do recon. So if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.